Namaste. My name is Tim Halloran. I'm an astrologer from Savannah, Georgia. This is a weekly astrological forecast for the third week of July 2015. Okay, and I think the challenge for me this week is how to give it to you all straight, not sugarcoat, and simultaneously not discourage, not make anyone paranoid or fearful as we deal with some of the more real and deep and somewhat tumultuous energy of this week. So, you know, first thing first, you know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, we really just need to remember who we are. And although it might be nice to think that we came to this earth to discover heaven, we actually came to this earth to make heaven happen here. And many of us might be aware that in order to make heaven happen here, uh, not only do we have to create that space and construct that space, but we also have a lot of cleaning up to do. And so many of us are here that are here are aware of our position sort of being the cleaning crew. Uh, we understand that we don't come here to make things perfect immediately. We come here to confront the mess, to acknowledge the mess, to not be shocked by the mess nor surprised by the mess. This is our duty. This is our job. This is our desire to clean up this world. And it might be simple to clean this world physically, the way we would clean a room or a street corner. But actually, I feel a lot of the cleaning that we're doing here on this planet is actually emotional cleaning and perhaps mental cleaning. Perhaps we are cleaning up concepts or feelings or confusion or guilt or shame. So these are some of the cleanup crew's job is to confront, acknowledge these things and to understand that we are here in the full power of who we are to do this because this is our desire coming out of our hearts to create heaven on earth, to unconditionally love all those that are surrounding us. So before we get too deep into uh, the rather thick energy that we have going on this week, and there's a lot of layers to it, before we start getting into any rants, let's try to explain the bit by bit technical astrology that's going on. So we've had the moon in Gemini the last couple days, and this morning the moon moved into Cancer. On Wednesday, 9.24 p.m. Eastern Time, we have a new moon in Cancer at 23 degrees 14 minutes. Then on Thursday, the moon moves into Leo. Saturday evening, the moon moves into Virgo. We also have Venus slowing down this week moving into Virgo at the same time as the moon this weekend. So, you know, we're having the new moon in Cancer. This is a seed planting time. This is also a time of dissolution, of death, and then rebirth. This oftentimes correlates with the moon cycle. The waning moon disappearing into the new moon. This is a time of dissolving where things can crumble. And this week on Sunday, we had Sun first square to Uranus. This can be spontaneous, shocking changes, as well as a freedom desire to pioneer, to reinvent, to revolutionize. Today, we have Venus in Leo square to Saturn. This can be coming up to some challenges, some initial challenges, some challenges that we're going to take with us through the next several months as we do Venus retrograde beginning in a couple weeks, lasting through the next month of August, Leo season, we are going to be getting deep, investigating into areas of relationship, of sexuality, of our own creativity, our creative values, and our value to express, to share intimate energy with one another, to inspire and uplift one another, to present our own authentic expression, both in the romantic relationship with friends, and just to express this authentically in our own life. So today, with Venus square to Saturn, we may be coming up to an initial challenge that has to do with these themes. We may feel limited in areas of relationship, sexuality, freedom to express, express our own authentic nature. And when Venus turns retrograde, she will pass Saturn in square again. August 4th will also be conjunct Jupiter at this time. So any themes that are being initiated now will continue through the next several months. 
Certainly August 4th will be the retrograde reflection on this theme. We will get deeper with it. Jupiter will illuminate this theme. We will see it clearly. We will have an expanded perception. And we're going to be investigating these themes. Yes, when Venus turns retrograde in a few weeks, really just, you know, one week and a couple days, this is when Venus goes into the underworld. We reflect on past relationships. We reflect on our past usage of sexuality, of creativity, of expression, of relatedness to other people. So we can anticipate some of these coming up. And finally, on the new moon on Wednesday, we have Mars conjunct Mercury in Cancer, exactly opposite to Pluto in Capricorn at the time of this new moon. So, we're dealing with these inner planets in Cancer, the sign of subjective, emotional, family-oriented, intimacy-oriented. Yes, this is an area that is wet, that is watery, that is thick, that is full of emotion, full of feelings that are very deep, that are sometimes so deep, we have to remove layer after layer after layer after layer to get to the root to get to the cause of why I feel this way, why I experience this, why is this a redundant experience, why is this a theme, why do I always feel this way. We are descending, we are getting deeper into this. And what can be provoking this exploration and this descent is Mars opposite to Pluto, Sun square to Uranus. These inner planets are moving in the area, the critical area, where this Uranus-Pluto square has been affecting the Cardinal Cross. And this Uranus-Pluto square that's been going on since 2012 has been radically transforming the collective consciousness as well as particular individuals who have gone through really intense periods of change where there could have been shocking changes, ends of relationships, ends of lives, changes of locations, things spontaneously change and we take a new direction. And whenever there are periods of very fast, intense progress, are these gentle periods or are these tumultuous periods? We have been in a tumultuous period, many of us, for several years, and we're not quite through it yet. And this is kind of where I feel we're at in the midst of this summer months. Saturn slowing down and about to turn direct in August. This is going to be the final push forward. This is going to be the final purge, getting the last of the toxins, the last of the insecurities, the last of the emotions that we may have been dealing with since 2012 or even previous to this, when Pluto and Uranus were coming together. These planets that, when combined, create this very intense transformation and revolution that is essentially progress. But while we're in the midst of it, while we're in the midst of death and rebirth and chaos and nothing is really settled yet, it can certainly not seem like progress. It can certainly seem like the opposite of progress. It can seem like we're falling back, we're slipping back into old ruts, old feelings, old frustrations can be coming up this week. And again, this week, the same as last week, we need to remember that many of the triggers on the surface, the little catalysts on the surface that are causing emotions, causing frustrations, causing us to investigate these themes, these areas, these subjects, we need to remember that this is oftentimes deeper than what we see on the surface. We need to be willing and anticipating a downward descent in order to confront the real issue, the original cause, which can go all the way back to childhood, which can stem from past lifetimes, we need to be hyper aware of how are the, is this theme, how is this pattern, how is this experience reflecting the past, reflecting my story, my wound, my personal injury. Okay, because this stuff does get very deep. Mars opposite to Pluto can sometimes be a reflection of what seeds got planted in November, December of 2014, what new projects, what new ideas took formation now. Now we can see where these things have led us and we can weigh 
Is this realistic? Is this actually what I want? Is this actually giving me the security that I'm after? Because all of these transits have to do with security and we're struggling to get it right now. And the struggle is real. The reason why we're being real with how we might be feeling and the experience we might be having is because we are the cleanup crew. We came here to confront the messes that need to be cleaned up. And the messes are preserved within culture, within tradition, within our own government systems. And we're finding out how these things may not give us the security we're after. We may have searched for security. We may have thought we were going to get it. And yet something is missing. Something falls apart and it puts us back into the past. It brings up old feelings, old patterns, old remembrances, old frustrations. And these things have to do with desires, Mars and Pluto. I want this, and yet I can't get this. This is my goal. This is my willpower. This is my desire. This is my individual purpose, meaning. And yet I don't feel totally aligned with it. I don't feel like I'm completely getting it. This is my sexual desire. I feel like this is what I need in order to get security, and yet something is missing. And I think the overall theme that is being presented to the entire collective consciousness right now is Pluto in Capricorn. What needs to change is culture, tradition, the past, our old ways of doing things, the customs, the school systems, how we were taught, how we were taught to see the world, how we were taught to interact with others, how we were taught to bring in our own abundance and happiness and security and peace and solitude. We are experiencing the challenge in acquiring these things right now. Because this world is not heaven yet. There is a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And one of the biggest things that needs to be cleaned up is in the emotional field. And in the emotional field is the collective, overwhelming experience of guilt, of shame, of fear, of paranoia. And so a new moon is an opportunity to sow a seed of intention. And this new moon in Cancer is all about sowing a seed of intention where we are planting and desiring future growth for soft, nurturing, welcoming, familiar, open, nurturing, comfortable energy where we can truly feel safe, where we can feel like we are allowed to feel whatever we're going to feel and not be in danger, not under threat, not being punished. And so we have to really look, is this giving me that? Is my job giving me that? Is my, you know, my work giving me that? Is my education giving me that? Do I truly feel this way in my family? Do we act, is this real authentic love? Is this real authentic unconditional love? Or is this some tradition or is this some expectation? Or is this subtle clinginess? Yes? There are so many things that we are taught is love, is nurturance, is going to give you security, is going to give you safety that doesn't. So do, do these things give us security or do they not? And we can experience, we can see how these things are not giving us true security at this time. And I think there's two major things we need to remember. In dealing with these, confronting the mess, confronting the challenges that can potentially occur. And by the way, not to make everybody afraid, you know, there are people having wonderful times out there. There are periods of grace and periods of intense progress that we all go through at varying times. So for some people, this may be a grace period, but collectively, worldwide, this is not a grace period. This is a time to get deep. This is a time to get real. This is a time to see what wants to get changed and to sow a seed of intention of how we can solve this problem of insecurity. As insecurity is brought out of the collective consciousness, scrutinized by us, observed and acknowledged by us, and then we have the opportunity to make adjustments and to see how we can get real security. Two things that are super important in order to get that. First of all, any experience that we go through, no matter how isolating it may seem, all experience that we experience are reflective of all other people's experience. 
No matter what we experience, be it the most tumultuous, heartbreaking death, or loss of a lover, or breakup, these are universal experiences. When we get sick, these are universal experiences, etc. We need to remember that although we do experience everything simultaneously, individually, which is the thing, we both experience things alone and not. So when we feel isolated, we feel alone, I'm the only one dealing with this, we need to remember, well, actually, everybody on the planet is dealing with their own personal insecurities, is dealing with their own issues, so we all feel like we're alone in this. And on one level, it's true, we are, because on an individual experience level, we are alone in the experience. But everybody else's experience is reflecting our own in some way. The second and most important thing for this new moon, and I suggest this to be a collective intention for us all, is let this be the end of the notion of punishment. We do not live in a universe that is reward and punishment based. We do live in a culture where many religious, cultural, family type based ideas revolves around these concepts. That when you do something wrong, you get punished. And that's to teach you a lesson. So you own up to your crap and you do better next time and that'll teach you. We really need to be aware that with stuff going on and our duty being the cleanup crew, confronting and cleaning up messes means there is no notion of punishment or reward here. We truly need to disintegrate that collective concept that, kept, that keeps many people in prison. Instead, I suggest a new concept be planted here, be seeded here, and take root here, which is the concept with any painful experience, any difficult, any challenging, any frustrating experience that one can undertake is an initiation. Any painful, troubling, challenging experience that we can go through is an initiation. Not punishment, not because you did something wrong and you need to learn better, it is because we are given the opportunity to start in a new direction, to initiate a new way that will inevitably be better. And I don't care whether you take the most extreme example ever and say, oh yeah, Mussolini murdered so many people and he deserves hell. And I'm not gonna say that when you murder a whole bunch of people because you're that unconscious, and ignorant, you don't create your own hell planet. What I'm saying is when you're that unconscious and ignorant and you create your own hell planet, it is an initiation for that soul to head in a new direction that is better. This is a transcendental concept that will take us out of the notion that I'm feeling bad, therefore there's something wrong with me. There is nothing wrong with us at this particular time. We are confronting and cleaning up the messes that we came here to clean up. Because we are the loving, brilliant souls that we are. And I typically see the most loving, the most innocent, the most uplifting and inspiring souls going through the most difficult times sometimes. Because on a soul level, soul level, we desire that experience because that's what we came here to confront and clean up. Now to be in that position, to truly be okay with that position, takes a very profound level of strength, doesn't it? And this is the opportunity with this new moon. Let this be this planted seed for this type of strength that we are the souls to be able to handle anything that's happening on this world with pleasure because that's what we came here to do because we are the inconceivably strong souls who intentionally came here to clean up and then create heaven on earth not skip to the end because when you're skipping to the end you're pretending and when you're pretending that there's heaven on earth when there's not I feel very very bad for you that's like keeping yourself in prison your entire life and pretending that that is the Garden of Eden. And that's not what we're doing here. So what we are doing is we're being very conscious of everything that's going on. We're seeing how this reflects our own deepest insecurities, our own frustration, our own inadequacy that can bring up feelings of fear, of guilt, of anger, of shame. 
and we can really understand how many levels we have to take off to get to the core issue and be okay with this process. And that can be the difficult, the most difficult part of this week, is we thought we were done with stuff, and we're not quite done with stuff. I thought when I would quit drinking, my depression would end. And it did end for a little while, but that wasn't the root cause of the depression. The drinking was just a really unhealthy addition that made it worse. I thought when I quit looking at pornography, I was going to stop having unrealistic sexual perceptions and be horny all the time. And it turns out that I still have these perceptions. I still have these conditions. I still have these sexual desires. These are some of the things that we can be experiencing. And we need to be aware with Saturn in mutual reception of Pluto. Pluto's in Saturn sign of Capricorn. Saturn's in Pluto sign of Scorpio. That these next month and a half, really, two months going into September, is like a final purge. We want to confront these insecurities. We want to confront these fears. This is what purging is. Whenever we consume toxins, and when we get born on this earth, we are destined to consume toxins. When we are born on this earth, we are destined to have energetic allergic reactions to the surrounding culture and world that we came here to confront, clean up, and change. We are destined to have these purging experiences because we are so blessed with a body, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, that automatically clears out if we can just simply be aware of ourselves and work with our body. Our system automatically clears these things out. Like when you get food poisoning, you spend the night above the toilet to make sure all those toxins get out of your system. This is what we are collectively doing at this time to remove from this planet fear, guilt, shame. All of these collective emotions that go very far back into the past age, which is why we need to be aware that these themes that keep repeating, these emotions that keep coming up, these really deep, uncomfortable, not fun things. It's not fun to be in the middle of vomiting. But you know what's worse than being in the middle of vomiting? Right before when you're still full of all the toxins and you feel really bad and that stuff needs to get out. And you know what feels a lot better? Afterwards, when your body's all clear and you can finally go, Phew, glad that's over with. So let's just be aware that there is nothing wrong with this process. There's nothing wrong with you just because you feel really bad. Feeling really bad is sometimes the healthiest thing for us. And that's what we're doing right now. We are getting real with this stuff. We are confronting this stuff. This weekend, Venus is going to push up into Virgo and then move back into Leo in the beginning of August. These next two weeks, Venus is just like, I want to purify, I want to purify. I have values that are healthy, I want to purify, but wait a minute. I have a lot of stuff that I need to look at in terms of sexuality, in terms of how I express my values, how I broadcast my truth to other people. All this stuff is very tied together and all this stuff goes back into the past age. We need to understand how culture, how tradition, how philosophy and religion may not have always given us the best structure for sexual understanding. We need to understand how our parents, our school teachers, our bosses may not have given us the best structure to get real security. And to get real security, to be that all strong person who can be, I know why I'm here and I'm not intimidated by what I'm feeling despite the tumultuousness. I know my soul. I know who I am and I'm not intimidated by this. These are all good signs and they are. These are good symptoms. It's good symptoms when you start getting rid of all of these things. It's a lot worse of a symptom if you're not aware of them. And for those of us who are very aware and very compassionate and loving, we do it for the people who don't, who are unaware. We're doing it for everybody. It's a gift. It's a service. We can be reminded of our own strength, of our own heart in times like these because we are never truly alone, even in the experiences where we truly feel at our most alone. 
So in order to acquire this strength, we need the Cancer Capricorn polarity, which is that we need to be our own parents. We need to anticipate these weeks, not so much disasters happening to us. That's not what I'm trying to convey here. What we need to anticipate is, first of all, we need to be ready and willing to help other people as they go through their challenges, as they go through their troubling times, as they go through their depression, their insecurity, their emotions and feelings are brought up. That's when we do cancer and we play the mother and we say, come here, my child. I have a home for you. I have food for you. You are taken care of. Yeah, you might have a hard time with the job, with work, with these various things, but guess what? We still have each other. And here's the real thing that I should have mentioned way earlier just so that everybody could have caught it. Another wonderful thing to plant a seed of intention for with this new moon is the desire for soul family. This is one way that we get this true strength and security is through understanding we are here on a mission. We, here, we are here together. We're doing this collectively. You know, so it's not your job, it's not your house, it's not the money, it's not even any of the physical things that give you security. It's that we are here for each other. And you're not going to feel alone forever because you have your soul family and your soul family empathizes with you. Even if they can't 100% 100 empathize, 100 empathize with you because they can't see directly from your eyeballs, we can still empathize with each other. And that is soul family. And guess what? All of these feelings, insecurities, tumultuous times enforces soul family. We come together. We, we are, you know, you know, this is kind of like a push to do this. And oftentimes little painful crises is, is once again an initiation for something better. Oh, the job didn't work out, the house didn't work out, the money didn't work out, and so you're forced out on the street. We'll make it real extreme. And you find your soul family that gives you more security than any of those things ever would. That's called a paradigm shift. That's what's going on right now. We need to understand what does and does not give us security. And guess what? What gives us more security might catch us by surprise because we weren't taught it. We're discovering what gives us more security. So soul family is when we come together and we say, come here, my child, you can empty out your emotions. I am not going to judge you. There is no such thing as punishment. Every single painful thing you go through is an initiation and I'm here to remind you of that. And as you're going through the difficult time, I will nurse you back to health. Simultaneously, we need to be our own strong person through the Capricorn route which is that even though we can anticipate this week being that person for other people, we cannot anticipate other people to be that for us. Particularly if we are the powerful healers and teachers that came here to change the world, we cannot anticipate other people to always be healing and teaching us. If you're the teacher and the healer, and we all are, if we're watching these videos, this is our time to be waking up, to be realizing that this is what we are. We have to understand that there's not always going to be teachers, not always going to be people there for us. Therefore, we have to become our own guiding force. We have to become our own security, our own solitude, our own peace. And this is Capricorn. Capricorn is just the stone cold wall of strength that can go through summer and go through winter and be unfazed like the mountain. We sit here and we are uninfluenced by the dance, by the drama, by the stories and all of the tumultuous stuff changing, unexpected shocking changes, so many emotions that come and go, so many thoughts that come and go. And yes, we're not ignoring those things, we're not demonizing those things, we're not going to call those things illusion or maya, but what we're going to do is know the entire time our true position is in is situated in the soul that is observing all these things. Our ego is our vehicle that is moving around, doing all these things. La la la, I'm a human being. I do this, I do this. I have a hard time, I have a good time, I have a fun time, I have a bad time. The soul is seated in the heart, watching all these things happen, and the soul doesn't get influenced. The soul actually enjoys it all. The soul is in a constant state of inconceivable wonder and awe. And so Capricorn is that we cannot always rely 
certainly not the government, the school, the system, the money system. We can never rely on these things. But we can also never rely on anything truly besides our own inner connection to God, our own spiritual platform, which gives us that level of strength to be able to do the nurturing part, to be able to help other people, to be the teacher, to be the healer. We need to be our own teacher, our own healer, our own parents. Therefore, we cannot always expect these things on the outside. And this can be painful this week as we do not receive these things on the outside. It is an initiation to discover these so much more powerful, so much better power within yourself, strength within yourself. It is an initiation to birth a new level of security that we thought we were going to get. Maybe we didn't get it the way we thought it was going to come. We're getting it better in a way that surprises us, in a way that we have to find ourselves, in a way that requires our own discovery. So we may have heard the phrase that God has a sense of humor, and we may have heard the phrase that God works in mysterious ways. God's sense of humor is very mysterious, and God is a trickster. Because we are limited beings, and our consciousness is limited, therefore we cannot see into the future. No astrologer can see into the future, not this one at least. You know, we are susceptible to being tricked by the full picture. We may think that things are heading a particular way, and oh no, or this is the end of that, or this is, you know, this is never going to happen now. And this is God's mysterious sense of humor because we don't always see the whole picture. Perhaps we don't always understand how the most tumultuous, intense, painful experiences are always the most powerful initiations that take us into deeper security, deeper love, deeper happiness than anything we can get through our conceptual, oh, this is how it's going to work out, oh, this is how it's going to work out. God likes to play tricks on us by having bigger and bigger and bigger levels revealed to us and then we get our minds blown again and again and again as we realize how much we did not know in terms of getting our own true love and security. As oftentimes the things that we think will never give us those things actually get us there the fastest. So this is a very incredible time. It's very thick energy. There's a lot of levels to this. But let's all put a very powerful collective intention into this new moon on Wednesday, July 15th, 9.24 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, that would be a dragonfly. <laughs> a big blue one. Wow, that's beautiful. Let's make this new moon intention to be the end of the concept of punishment and the initiation of soul family, that we are always here for one another, no matter what, and that all painful and difficult experiences are in fact initiations. And so in this endeavor, let us remember our true strength. Let us remember the souls that we truly are. Let us remember that we are in the vehicle going through the ride and we don't need to take it personally. We don't need to worry about right and wrong, punishment or reward. We are the cleanup crew. We came here to confront these things. And as we confront these things, this is our gift and our service back to the entire collective consciousness. So we are not alone. We are in this together. And I so much wish you and your beloved so much love Namaste.